Good hold up there. Come on. Badger Cove was sort of developed as a bouldering venue by Dan Varian and Ned Freehalley in around 2010. And they put up like quite a lot of classic hard lines like Badger, 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 really cool 80, then like 280 pluses, uh, for Wilderness and Dandelion Mind. I went there the first time in 2020 and uh, within like I think two or three sessions kind of like worked through all those problems. And then, yeah, I didn't go back till this year. Uh, went back a couple of times and put up like a sort of extensions to Bewilderness and Dandelion Mind, which I called Trance and Beautiful Mind, that both pushed the grades up to eight Cs. And I think were like really cool, added a lot of climbing. Um, but I was really keen to put up sort of my own independent line there. Like sort of like, you know, instead of like more of an extension, like a full line. And there was still space at part of the crack to do that. Yeah, so, this summer's been pretty dry summer, and um, because of that, there's a section of the the cove which is like pretty steep, kind of comes from the back of the c cave all the way out, and it's always been kind of damp and kind of a bit grim looking. But this year actually didn't look that bad with it being quite dry, so cleaned it up and then a bit of help from like Ned, we um, yeah really cleaned the line up and like found all the holds and it dried out really well and it's actually like pretty flipping amazing, and. Yeah, it's like got pretty wild moves, a lot of cool holds and stuff, and actually I think it's like a really cool line. It just sort of had never really been considered before because it was always just a bit grim. Whereas actually now that it's all clean, it's pretty amazing. So the boulder starts uh, right at the back of the cave, which means it comes like almost straight away through the steepest part, which is like a 80 degree roof maybe, which means that the climbing is super powerful. And although the holds are relatively okay size at this point, the moves are really difficult because of just how steep it is. But not only is it powerful, it's also pretty technical, which is pretty cool. Um, and then sort of this section ends after about seven moves where you do like a, you tag a bad intermediate and then hit a really poor sort of free finger half pad crimp. It's probably, probably like 80 boulder to hit that crimp, I think. So yeah, the second section then starts from this, uh, this poor edge that you have with your left hand. Uh, you have to like walk your feet a bit and then do this huge dead point move into this pretty bad and sharp uh, two finger pocket um, and this move like it's one of those really weird moves where I first tried it I thought it was so close to the limit of being kind of impossible and then after like sessions kind of go by you can kind of learn it a bit more get a bit more tension in the feet and start to stick it what I realised was really important really quickly was the fact that you need to keep your feet on for the move like it's been there was potential to hit the pocket and then sort of cut a bit, but if you did that, there was no way you were finishing the boulder. So it's trying to like learn to do this really hard dead point, like where you had to be super accurate, and then also like keep your feet and all the tension at the same time. Once you stuck this, I'd say that the second section of the boulder is only probably about another like five moves, like two sort of like you tie into me to get another really bad pocket, um, which you then have to hold like a really hard like tensiony cut loose on um, and you have to transition your feet from one side of the basically essentially like from one side of your body all the way to the other side to then do a sort of dead point into a gaston and then transition your feet all the way to the other side again so it's like not a lot of moves but a lot of time on the wall and really tensiony. The second section is definitely the crux and if you're counting it it's just like three four moves it's, it's probably eight a to eight b boulder around there I think. So the third and final section of the boulder um, essentially starts with like these very, very powerful like uh, long reaches up into this huge scoops out pocket, which is just like super bicepy and like when you're when you're tired at the end of the climb, it's like you it completely drains you, and you end up in two okay pockets, and then you essentially join the end of an old Dan Baron problem, rampant rabbit, just seven C. So you essentially do the hard section of that for the last couple moves. Um, so once you've like got all powered out through this like monster climbing, you then still have to do like a 7C kind of high ball, which is pretty exciting to get to sort of the final jugs, which would be fine if you then dropped from there, but then you've got like another couple meters of top out to do on pretty terrifying rock. By the fifth session, it was all coming together pretty well and I was really hopeful I could get it done um, because it was like a kind of another heat wave coming in. 
So we yeah, got like organized big crew to go out. We had like, you know, gym, wedge crew. We had like tons of pads. Out. Um, so it was really good like actually being able to have the sort of whole start of the climb padded so that I only had to worry once I got to the jugs about pads being moved. So like that wasn't in my head uh, and I was just going there to try and send it basically. And then what I hadn't really appreciated until this session was just how much the climb takes out of you. So I had like warmed up, had one go where I did pretty well, managed to stick the big pocket dead point and then the, got to the next pocket after and then just like blew it there. And then like rested for quite a long time, felt not so bad but then when I gave it this next go, I, like it all just clicked together. managed to fight through the pockets. I just stuck the next move, just stuck the move after, and basically for the, like the next five moves in a row, every single one I thought I was falling off and just somehow stayed on. And then, yeah, fought through like the seven C top and like was boxed out my mind at the jugs before the top out. Even like snapped a foot, which was pretty terrifying when I was up there. Come on. And then was so tired at the top of it that I was even struggling to down climb back to the crack. <laughs> like, yeah, I just. Three. And then for like half an hour, an hour after, I was just boxed. It was just completely powered out. Doing good, mate. And yeah, that kind of made me realise that, you know, if I hadn't done it on the second go, that was that would have been it for the day. And Big I kind of like right. only then Level appreciated it was actually that powerful and that like sort of intense that potentially it's a boulder problem. You could only try two max three times a session, which was pretty crazy, really. Back the road. 
Raining shots. Now it's the underwhelming end. Grade wise, it's been really hard, like to kind of decide on that. I'm, I'm confident this is the hardest boulder I've ever done. Um, but it is also kind of a different style to a lot of the harder boulders I've done. Although it is still long, which is kind of the, f the style that I stick with, having pockets for the crux is quite unusual. So that's kind of been playing on my head, whether maybe I'm not str as strong on pockets as, you know, I think I am, or as the boulder to be hard. But it definitely felt harder than everything else I've done. It definitely felt like a level above the other two 80s that I did at the Crag Trance and Beautiful Mind. So it kind of would seem unfair to only give it 8C. Um, so I think I'm going to give it 8C plus and then just need to have other people come and try it and let me know if the pockets are as savage as I think they are. Actually, it's not that bad if you come from the Frank and Yuri, you know.